Back in 1999, I was a first year music teacher at a public elementary school in Queens, New York. And I taught six classes a day, and I worked with more than 500 students every week. And it was definitely not easy. Um, I remember on the morning of my first day, I set for myself one fundamental goal. Do not turn one single child off to music, or in any way stifle his or her creativity. You see, I viewed myself as an ambassador of sorts to the world of music, a link in a chain of musicians that were taught by the previous generation, and then took this knowledge and this joy and, pa and passed it on to the younger generation. So there I was, given this opportunity by the New York City public school system, to stand before hundreds of kids every week and teach them about music. And underlying all the lesson planning, all the classroom management strategies, even the considerable lack of instruments, was this one fundamental goal. Do not turn one single child off to music or in any way stifle his or her creativity. So how do you do that? How does one best and honestly reach each child's innate love of music and further develop their own creativity. No doubt there's many ways one can do this. The approach that I took looks like this. The most uncommon denominator. What better way to reach as many students as possible than to ask each child to create and express for themselves as an individual, as a person whose thoughts and feelings matter? Why not ask our students to bring their hearts and their minds to the table? Why not build a music program from the inside? So we began to write and perform our own songs, and we began to look at and learn from what the kids created. That summer, after my first year teaching in the public schools, I was asked to design a music program for a nonprofit youth development organization called Project Mori. So building upon this idea that the best way to reach kids was to actually ask them to share their thoughts and feelings, I offered what I believed to be the most accessible and powerful music program possible. And I didn't go in there with a slew of music books or even a ton of instruments. I was thinking less about what I could bring to the kids and more about what they already had. Why not build a music program from the inside? Why not work with what was already there? So I went to these kids with an eight-track digital recorder and a microphone. The essence of the work became pretty clear. What do these kids have to say, and how can we help them say it? What I want to talk about today is the impact of giving voice to our young people, the impact of allowing our children to speak, to write, to play, and to sing. I believe children are deeply and powerfully awakened when we show them that we are indeed listening. I believe great things happen when we equip young people with belief in themselves. And I believe that the fight and the resolve that exists within so many of our kids is a well of inspiration, especially for adults like me who are still learning to give voice to our deeper selves. Microphone, an instrument for converting sound waves into electrical energy variations, which may then be amplified, transmitted, or recorded. I'd like to propose a new definition. Microphone, an instrument for converting internal thoughts and feelings into empowered human energy, which may then be amplified, transmitted, or recorded in order to transform and save lives. And it's true, in order to transform and save lives. Since 1999, I've worked with thousands of kids, and I do believe that music and creativity can transform and save lives. Can I prove that to you? I don't know. But in the time that we have remaining, I want to share with you some of the original lyrics and music that these kids wrote. And the kids also had an active hand in producing and playing the music as well. If we're talking about transforming and saving lives through music, then we have to hear from the kids themselves. So let's hear what they have to say. This first song was produced by a young man named Isaiah 
after watching a peer of his get wheeled down a hospital hallway as a result of gun violence. What if we equipped young people with the joy and belief in themselves that comes from taking ownership of their ideas and their own creativity? That deep confidence, that feeling, is not a fleeting thing. You carry it with you. It lasts. It affects your day to day. You feel better. You're more prepared to handle life. It's not bulletproof. It's not a magic lamp. But it makes a difference. I can tell you firsthand, I've felt it. And I've seen it in hundreds of kids. For the last decade and a half, I've helped young people write and record their own songs throughout the United States. What remains truly remarkable and deeply inspiring to me is how much these kids all have to say. No matter how hard their struggles are, no matter what kind of struggle it is, it is so incredibly moving to witness the insight these kids have into themselves and about what they see what they hear and feel in the world around them. All this violence, man. All these young kids getting caught up in all this craziness. Some of these kids were born into it, and that's all they know. Some on out, and just don't know where to go. I made it out. Now it's time for y'all to make it out. Next is a song written by a young man attending the same school special education as Isaiah. Dion is a supremely talented artist. Though academics are not his favorite thing, his school and his music classes function as his primary home. When you write and record songs with kids so many times, the challenges these young people are facing on a daily basis within themselves and in their environments transform from what can be an unspeakable obstacle or a less than hopeful reality into a point of power. That this is real for me, this is what's going on. I'm going to speak about it in this song, and you will hear no, me. No, won't really know about the things that I be going through. What I want to tell you, come let me tell you. No, won't really know about the things that I be going through. But I want to tell you, come let me tell you. Here's a song written by a 13-year-old camper out in Michigan named Evan, who asked his guitar instructor to help him write a song about Nelson Mandela. So often kids are told what to do, what to think. Society and culture tell them what's cool. What we have the opportunity to do is the exact opposite. What happens if we truly honor our children and ask them what's really on their minds? What are their hopes, their fears, their dreams for themselves and for this world? What if we showed our children that we were really listening? That we were consciously witnessing what they were going through? What if we give them the space and the opportunity to express all that they have? To express themselves in language and in music and we listen. Many, 
many more words out there than what we just read. There's a lot more music out there than what we just heard. There's a lot more out there that has yet to be expressed by our children. There's a lot more out there that needs and deserves our attention. I believe children are deeply and powerfully awakened when we show them that we are indeed listening. I believe great things happen when we equip young people with belief in themselves. I am continually inspired by the fight and the resolve that exists within so many of our kids. The voices we are about to hear are voices from Newark, New Jersey. Voices of boys and girls in the sixth and seventh grade. Let us insist that we have and improve music and art in our schools to not turn off one single child to the power of music. Let us not stifle in any way the boundless creativity of our children. They have a lot to say. We can help them say it. Jesus, what?